thanks for the opportunity. Good to speak to you this afternoon. I recently finished this study uh, in Brussels sprouts uh, using a sprayable pheromone, um, adding it as a part of IPM. And um, I want to share those data with you. So diamondback moth, for those of you who may not be familiar with it, it is uh, uh, an important pest in several cruciferous crops. It exclusively feeds on these uh, crucifers. Um, it can have several generations in a year. Each uh, adult female lives for up to two weeks and uh, can deposit eggs uh, for 10 days, um, 250 to 300 or so. So they, they can do significant damage if they're not controlled. Uh, you see that in the bottom, uh, there are holes on this. So this is not Brussels sprouts, by the way. It is a, a cauliflower field right across the Brussels sprouts field where it has a lot of uh, damage early uh, in um, its growth stage. And uh, seedlings are especially susceptible. If not controlled, they can um, destroy uh, the seedlings or affect the developing part. So heading can be uh, impacted. So typically growers spray a lot of uh, pesticides, uh, biological or chemical or whatever they have available. And you may also have heard about uh, several problems of uh, resistance in um, diamondback moth to various pesticides. And this report from 200, uh, 200, 2006 shows that there were 76 active ingredients uh, that this pest is resistant to. And within um, the next 14 years, and then we, we, it went up to 95 and a lot more cases, reported cases. And you may also have heard about uh, BT resistance, um, Bacillus thuringiensis resistance in diamond back moth. And again, we also have examples of spinosad and uh, pyrethrins among biologicals that are resistant to uh, that this pest is, has become resistant to. And just to show the extent of uh, this uh, uh, resistance, so this is an example from Brazil where they had a more than 11,000 fold resistance to this uh, insect growth regulator. So the point here is that, uh, you know, this is an important pest and the growers typically rely on pesticide sprays. And uh, we all understand that when we spray any particular pesticide or a particular mode of action uh, pesticide, then, you know, insects develop resistance. So the idea is to suppress it, rotate various materials and um, try to increase the control efficacy. So this is the field we had and uh, it was uh, in, in Santa Maria. Um, uh, the, the experimental setup was like this. We had five acres for grower standard where pesticides were applied. And then we had another five acre block right next to it, uh, which actually had a little more diamondback moth uh, incidents uh, at the beginning. Uh, so these were next to each other and we divided into these four replications and then set up uh, a trap, this uh, trap with loops in the center of each of those replications. And we started taking the uh, counts, like a moth counts regularly and uh, change the lures as needed. And then this is the treatment uh, uh, plan. We, the grower, this is the growers. Uh, so it is a six month crop and they typically spray 10 to 12 times. And in just the, during our study period, they already sprayed 10 times. And it is not just one or two. As you can see, there are several, like uh, Crimaxis, Bacillus, Thuringiensis, uh, Bacterial, and the uh, rest of them are uh, chemical pesticides. And, uh, you know, there are quite a few of them. And each time, and, and the other treatment where we had the pheromone was more or less like this. Uh, the reason I said more or less is they had to change, a, slightly change it uh, for the buffering reasons. So one, one time they changed one product to another one, um, uh, slightly the concentration and some other minor differences just once, but rest is the same in both of them. And this checkmate uh, flowable pheromone was sprayed on these two days, uh, about one month apart. Um, and this is what we found. So this is where we started, right? Right after 
August 9, uh, 8th. So we had higher moths before that, and there was a big drop. But you see there was a decline in general in moth populations in all, all over the field. Uh, but uh, we continue to have fewer moths on the traps in the way uh, the checkmate was applied. Um, and this is where it shows the significant differences on these two particular dates. And um, this is just to show what it looked like. And since this was towards the end, you see a lot uh, fewer moths even in the regular uh, grower standard one, but uh, early in the season, we had a lot more. It was full of uh, moths. And uh, here you hardly see any, uh, just one here. And, um, and if you look at the percent change compared to the grower standard alone and what happened with uh, um, the flowable pheromone, um, immediately we had a, a big decline here. It was higher than, right, like 20% more before we started the study. And then it went down to, this is 62 um, or 63% immediately. And then eventually towards the end of the study, we had 97 to 99, almost 99% control or difference, uh, fewer moths here from checkmate. And if you look at the larval feeding, Okay, this, this is important. We also want to not just the moth counts, but we also want to see the difference in larval damage, larval numbers and the damage. Um, you see that uh, we, we continue to see higher numbers, significantly higher in the checkmate. That is because this, this is all the damage that was at the bottom of the leaves right at the beginning of the study and it continued to be the same. Uh, so we, we did not see any new damage anywhere else and we could not find any except for two or three larvae from all those uh, uh, sampled plants, uh, there was uh, nothing else. So this damage is uh, very safe to assume that it was from um, early in the crop season before we started the study. and. Uh, I'm working with the grower to collect the yield, collect the yield data, and we want to see if uh, we, we could, uh, um, if there are any differences between those treatments. Then, what does it mean in terms of the cost? So this is an important thing, right? Uh, you know, we may have several uh, solutions or several options that we could recommend, but are they going to be able to use? They will use it only if it makes uh, financial sense or unless there is a serious uh, resistance problem or some other uh, factor that forces them to use it. So here checkmate costs $45 um, per spray, per acre. These are all per acre. And here you see um, there was anywhere from $78 to $146 uh, for each of those sprays with an average of 128. And I, I think the grower is might be spraying one or two more after this. They might have already sprayed those one or two more sprays that they mentioned. Um, so if we look at the cost and the control, uh, so this is $91 additional cost per acre and uh, but the grower said they can eliminate two to three of those sprays what they would have sprayed based on this kind of control they can uh, easily reduce those uh, that frequency and eliminate two to three that means they would you know uh, 128 times two versus uh, three times so that is 164 to 292 dollars of uh, potential savings per acre uh, if they by investing 91 dollars okay and conclusions uh, it it mating disruption significantly reduced the adult uh, diamondback moth populations and uh, you know it appears to be an important uh, tool in uh, DBM IPM and uh, it, it is also convenient rather than setting up these uh, puffers or other kinds of uh, uh, pheromone um, dispensers they could easily spray it is compatible with their uh, material uh, to other, other materials they're spraying and uh, just uh, uh, two times and if necessary they could spray one more but uh, this seems to be working out very well and uh, good to have additional tool for uh, diamondback moth control.
And that is the end of my presentation. And uh, are there any questions looks like? Great, Surendra, thank you. Yeah, there's a few questions in the chat. Uh, one from Steve, would you expect diamondback moth to become a worse problem with warming climate? Um, that, that's a good question. Uh, any, anything could become uh, worse, like it already has multiple um, generations and, uh, you know, with the increased temperatures, they complete their life cycle faster. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't anticipate this becoming any bigger problem, uh, bigger problem than any other insect from global warming. 